right, guys, Dominic Gizzo, the Bull of MLM Network Marketing Warfare Podcast. And we're going to be going over how to answer questions today, right? I think the importance of all the anti-MLM challenges is to be able to answer the questions. The more that you understand the business, the more that you're going to be able to articulate it without, without hesitation, right? And that's the main key. We have a very big movement of anti-MLM for a reason. There are so many people who have. They've manipulated. They've used emotionalism, hype, false income claims. I've always said it. When it comes down to the anti-MLM argument, I agree with their bitching about the tactics that that people in in the industry use. I don't agree with, oh, it's a scam. It's not a scam. You were manipulated. I was manipulated. I used to use the emotionalism and hype and sensationalism because that's what I was trained on, and I didn't understand this. So the industry, I so far, and I've been asked to debate, uh, hopefully this will come through by a couple different people, finally, and I want to know, what is the scam? Because if it's going to be on, well, you have to recruit, you know that up front. You know, you can only make your money by recruiting, you know that up front. And that's actually not true. It's not only. It's the best way the most money is made through perpetuating a system, right? It's, all oh, the industry's a scam? The industry, How? If it comes down again to that, here comes company A, B, C, D, and it's this is their their compensation plan, this is their format, and it's lawful, legal, permittable, and it has a proven successful model. I don't care if it's got three percent of the people who got involved that are successful. How is it a scam? I don't know any other industry from professional sports to politics to Fortune 500 companies. How is it in America alone? We have 329 million people, and we have what 700 billionaires. Does that mean becoming a billionaire is a fraud, is a scam, or is it just the path to get there is fucking harder than anything else out there? I also want people to embrace network marketing as one of the biggest character developments on the planet. I've been involved with everything from law enforcement to sports to competing to friggin' fighting. And you know what? Entrepreneurship is the single toughest character development uh, skill set, baptism by fire that you'll go through. And a lot of people are not cut out for this. And at one time, I wasn't cut out. I had to determine, how do I want to get involved in this game? I've talked about my backstory before, that in network marketing, I recognize it as a 97% failure rate. 97% failure rate. Does that mean it's a scam, or does that mean that 3% of the people out there were just tougher, better, and they just didn't quit than I was? So I want to know, it's like, all right, how do I wind up attaining what they attained? That's what I think that people should have a mindset of. Unfortunately, we have a culture now where people put themselves in a position of, oh, I deserve, I deserve, I deserve. Fuck no. If you want it, go after it. And that's what network marketing will teach you better than any other industry out there as far as I'm concerned. Going back, I I think this is a great opportunity. I got this in the comment section of my Instagrams from um, Stop the Amway tool scam. Uh, Amway, obviously, is probably the godfather of all network marketing. Uh, And the comment was at Dominic Gizzo, describe what you mean by the right way. This was in response to a uh, a post I put up about network marketing, you know, has to be done the right way. And it's by non-manipulative tactics. It's by full transparency. It's by integrity. A lot of attributes. Are you willing to defend your position on my podcast like a real man or will you run away like a scared little girl? And I said, please DM me the time and format live and unedited only. That's my stipulation. If anybody wants to DM me, it's got to be either live or unedited. You cannot edit for your use anything that I put up in that format. Clip it up if you want later on. I don't give a shit. Put it up in your stuff. But when it comes down to that, that full podcast must be available. Uh, Will... Uh, will not, I said I will not participate in any content that will be edited. And he did. He DM me. Don't know what his format is yet, but I saw his uh, website, and it is allmlmfacts.org. Allmlmfacts.org. The mission is to help people around the world find out facts about MLM, which stands for multi-level marketing, and provide help for those seeking facts. The mission is to prevent others from, one, losing irreplaceable, valuable time. That's subjective. Number two, damaging, destroying relationships, both personal and professional. Subjective. Number three, losing money, which results in a lesser lifestyle, debt, bankruptcy, limited retirement uh, uh, resources, uh, etc., by being scammed into the far too many predatory MLMs. Every single thing that is on this website that is their mission statement can be attributed to any business on the planet. 
brick and mortar or virtual, anything, anything. So again, I really, when people bring this to you, I, I want you to be able to say, how is this different from any other business in America, in America? And anti-MLM people are one of two things. They're either socialists or they're ignorant because half of these anti-MLM people, they wind up having YouTube channels. They're building their YouTube channel. They're marketing their content to their network. A lot of them have sponsors, air quotes sponsors, right? Use my link. that They do affiliate marketing. So they didn't like network marketing. So they go to affiliate marketing next. Use the promo di code discount, uh, whatever, glossy hair nails. Uh, and then their content needs to be marketed. So what do they do? Share this. If you like this video, share it. Give it a thumbs up. Yeah, it's the same, same thing as network marketing. Oh, but they're not recruiting semantics 100 you're recruiting your network to do things for you we'll get we'll we'll go on that as well too but again everything in your mission statement can be applied towards any business on the planet doesn't make a difference what it is um the vision bring honesty openness and transparency to all mlms an environment where adequate disclosures are made to prospects and well known to, to all distributors i have no problem with that uh the two primary disclosures needed are the amount of money made by the company and or high-level distributors from the training motivational tools profit. The various meetings, books, CDs, voicemails, website access, etc. Okay, so the first thing you want to know how much the company makes. I think that's fair. You should be able to make uh, know what the company makes. But you want to know what the top-level people make? Uh, I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. I'm not a millionaire, but my question is, how does that benefit others, or does it not give them a... Because you're all about the perception... Not everybody can make a million dollars a month. Well, that's got to be a goal. That's a goal for me, right? Million dollars a month. I'm setting my standards so fucking high. That's where that it's at. Will I achieve that? You bet your ass. It's going to take time. But how does, uh, I'll use her an example as a different, in a different uh, 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 industry. Jesse Lee Ward maybe makes you know, a few hundred thousand dollars a month. How is her income disclosure going to affect my ability to build? It'll either motivate me to be driven and i am driven okay jesse lee ward who is a friend i will be like well this bitch is now my competition and i gotta go bury her right because i'm all about competing with those i care about and those i admire we or is it going to destroy me oh i could never make what she makes she has other personalities i do i see the defeatist mentality of that but i would like clarification why an income disclosure of the people above you because i don't know any other business where it's like you go to mcdonald's for 15 dollars an hour for uh, uh you know to work the cash register do you why is it important you know what the gm made is it is that going to make a determining factor whether or not well it's easier for me to wind up just flipping burgers and working i don't want the responsibility of uh, having to do paperwork hiring people firing people being there open to close i don't want that responsibility we have to we have to we have to find a base for why these uh, requirements are essential uh and you're getting income from the tools right so books cds voicemails websites i don't know how that works like me specifically all the content i put out is free I don't care what company you're with. I don't care if you're with Amway. I don't care if you're with Herbalife, Monet. I don't care who you're with. I want to help the industry. So I don't charge for this. My YouTube channel doesn't even have enough for monetization yet, right? So that being said, all this is out here for free. If some, if I decided to have a, a monetized YouTube channel when it grows, right? When it hits that threshold, is it, is it immoral? If I put up limited information so that you'll watch it, get a click, and I get 0 0.03 cents per click, and then I say, if you want more information, you can work with me one-on-one -on -one for $500 an hour. That's capitalism. Is it wrong that somebody continues to make their income off of that? I know what you're, you're thinking, and here's my. this is one of my issues too, right, is the funnel filling uh what do you call it? Businesses. Every time I'm on, you know, I have one YouTube channel that's like the paid, right? Where I don't have any ads or anything, but my other YouTube channels, they all, oh, and every time I go to this one, the bull of MLM and I'm on it, funnel filling programs will pop up in the videos I search for as a commercial first. Right. And my thought is, well, wait a minute. If you believe in your system so much, why are you charging 99 99 for it a month? When shouldn't you just be taking that knowledge and applying it to a network marketing team? Since that's exactly who you're targeting. And uh, teaching them because you'll infinitely make more money. But again, that's not my business. If somebody wants to make money off of it, it's how is that a scam? 
So again, this is we're capitalists. It, I, this goes back to anti MLM people are either ignorant how capitalism works, or they're socialists, or they just don't have what it takes for any industry. Um, the amount of profit coming in from sales to non distributors. I don't even understand what that means. And the amount of profit coming from sales to non distributors. That's that should that should be how that be is. So you're saying because a lot of people think that the only way to make money in network marketing is through recruiting people. And there's some inaccuracies that he, I believe he said in one of these things where it's like, you know, the, the high uh, of, of volume of cost of investment that it comes to making for a company. And I'm going to talk about that in a second. But so if I sell to customers and my, like my upline and the company I'm with, uh, she's at the highest rank. She has probably 10 times more customers than she does reps. But is that a scam? She has a different focal point for the business. She's pure science and, and facts and research, and her skill set is phenomenal in that. My skill set is the business side development, the franchising, and the perpetuation of business knowledge, right? So I will go for and Her and I have had a conversation for my specific goals are to build more business owners, franchisees, recruit more people, and hers is customers. What difference does that make with the volume? Do we have to show people that this is what she makes versus what I make? Or do we just present it and say, these are your options to make money. We'll teach you how on both and both skill sets. I'm still looking for the scam. The first disclosure is needed to prevent RICO frauds. And the second disclosure is needed to prevent legal illegal pyramids. How are, okay, I would like, I've yet to have anybody answer because by now the United States government would have cracked down on this. How are either of these things illegal? The methodology does uh, kind of warrant a moralism. Like if I go out with a girl and I lie to her about wanting to date her and be exclusive to her, then I sleep with her and break up with her, move on to the next person. That's immoral, but it's, it's, that's how life works. If I go to a job and they hire me and I say I want to invest myself in this company, grow and build, and I'm going to dedicate everything I am to them, and then I quit after a week saying, no, is that illegal or immoral? I don't, I don't understand what this is. And, and I get the fact that you're looking to link monetary development to illegal activities, and so far I haven't seen it. Mission is to prevent others from losing irreplaceable. Where did you read this? Okay, so he just repeats the... Uh, the mission goals, bringing illegal MLMs down. If there is one, I'm 100% for it. 100%. If you can show that something is illegal, knock it off the fucking planet. 100%. Or help them to become legal. Okay, here's something that I want to know. I think it's thank you. You're the only person I've seen so far that says this. Bringing illegal MLMs down, I'm 100% behind behind you in alignment with you. Or help them to become legal. Every, I want to know, with all the anti-MLMers out there, right, all of them, to my knowledge, the ones that have 2,000 YouTube subscribers or 100,000 YouTube subscribers, not one of them of influence has been contracted by any network marketing company they have publicly criticized or asked to say, you know what, you have such a big reach, you seem to have a nonstop knowledge about what we do. Would you please come and evaluate our content so that we can fit within compliance from what we're missing? Because maybe we are illegal and immoral. You know what? Would you work with us? So why have I not seen one anti-MLM uh, loudmouth online ever be paid for by a company to evaluate their company to make them better? I'll wait. Um, number two, be the website of choice regarding both uh, legitimate and illegal MLMs, including facts and analysis, be a forum of open discussion where all points of view have a voice as long as they engage in responsive discussion of the issue. Right, but don't forget your comment to me. Are you, gonna, uh, are you willing to defend your position on my podcast like a real man or run away like a scared little girl? Again, I don't see any professional value so far that you're offering. So far, you're like every other scorned person out there who got screwed over by a boyfriend or girlfriend, and now you're bitching about stuff. 
Um, MS, MLMs. Mis- I want to define what MLM is first because I think they had that. Uh, all right, let's see this. I think this may have been it. What is a Ponzi scheme? Can't click on this. Why not? What is an MLM? There we go more. Oh, here we go. That's what is an MLM? This is what I want to know. This is from January of 2016. Posted on February 2016. Uh, all right. Multi-level marketing. MLM. This is important if you're in this business. Let's hear, as defined by allmlmfacts.org, what is a multi-level marketing business? Multi-level marketing. I'm going to call it MLM by now. Uh, is a marketing strategy in which the sales force is compensated not only for sales as they generate, but also for the sales of other salespeople that they recruit. I'm going to read that again. Multi-level marketing is a sales strategy in which the sales force is compensated not only for sales they generate, but also for the sales of other salespeople they recruit. So, I owned a gym, a 2,700-square-foot gym in uh, Schaumburg, Illinois, for three years, and I didn't know how to run the gym business, so I actually worked at a a big-box gym for quite a while just to learn the industry, right? And I was a trainer there because that was part of what I did. I'm a martial arts teacher and a personal trainer. And um, the way the system works was I was paid off of pure commission off of the sessions I trained with people. There was no funnel filled for me. The first month I was there... I think I got uh, $400 every two weeks. You know, that was, that was to get myself acclimated. After that month was up, pure sales, right? Pure sales. I was allowed to have a second job. I was still a cop at the time with approval from the company, right? I, whatever, right? So the, number one, they want you there 24-7, 12 hours a day, whatever. You don't get paid until you wind up signing a client. That client is by, you know, four weeks, six weeks, whatever it is. The GM's position, oh, let me back up, the personal training manager's position was to help me with the pitch and the close after I gave somebody a great free workout, right? That's an hour of my time for free. I, got, I would have to go to the gym or go to the gym, walk around, prospect people and say, okay, hey, would you like a free training session? Great. So I spent that time free. I'd have to market myself find a client that was willing to work for me for free. Most are like, no, no, so-and-so is my trainer. Okay, great, because now you're competing in a gym with 10 other people. And then afterwards, you have to try to get them to sit down with a manager. Most are like, no, I didn't want to be pitched and closed. I just want to go through a workout. Then the, then the, the fitness manager does their job to pitch and close and try to get you on a package. Three days a week was the most, right? We want three days a week, we want five days a week. They're spending $60 an hour for that rate. You want them spending a lot of money because you get... 10% commission off that. The more that the fitness manager's tra- uh, uh, training department makes, his or her bonus reflects on what we pull in. The GM gets the same concept from both the fitness department and from uh, uh, the, the sales department. The regional gets from all five or 10 GMs and what they pull in. Are, are you tracking me right now? I just want to know if that's similar. If it is, why are not more big box gyms a scam and shut down for illegal activities? Just wondering. We'll keep going. The recruited sales force is referred to as, in the participants, as this downline. And they could provide multiple uh, levels of compensation. True. Absolutely true. Because you're looking, I mean, in, in the gym industry... It wasn't, uh, it's not illegal for me to go, hey, dude, you give me a client and they sign up for 10 lessons, I'll give you 100 bucks. Referral fee. Real estate. Real estate, you make no money unless you close a deal. And there are referral fees. You market yourself. Again, I I really, I don't want to be an ass. And I know a lot of people just don't like me because I deliver the material. Does that mean real estate is a scam? And does that mean that uh, the gym industry is a scam? Or car sales? Uh, the recruit sales number. Okay. Uh, other terms used for MLM include pyramid selling, network marketing, referral marketing. According to the US FTC, some MLM companies constitute illegal pyramid scams which exploit members of the organization. How? How? I don't. You, you, can you explain how? So many people who I've seen on, on YouTube, they do these outrageous claims of they exploit people, this and that. 
And then it all comes back to personality conflicts and it comes back to manipulation as far as emotionalism, never against the system. It's always an individual, a team, a group, this and that. I get that. That's the culture of network marketing, which I align with you 100%. Has some serious uprooting that's needed to be done. I will stand with you shoulder to shoulder to just drop these fuckers out. But you're not aligning so far with the system by telling me how it's a scam. MLM is one type of direct sales. Uh, most commonly, the salespeople are expected to sell products directly to consumers by means of relationship referrals and word of mouth marketing. What business doesn't do that? If you're a restaurant owner and you have a couple that comes in twice, that two times that week, are you going to buy them a dessert? Are you going to build relationships? Are you going to get to know them in their first name? I was a, a bartender for before I became a cop. Do you know how awesome it was when people came in and before they sat down, you had their drink ready and they felt special and valuable and they tipped more? What's the acronym for Tim? Tip, to ensure proper service. So the more that I built a relationship with my clientele at the bar, the more money I made. Scam? Let's keep going. Um, MLM salespeople do not only, uh, and well, I want to go back to the word of mouth marketing too. You ever see these bartenders on, on social media? Hey, come and see me tonight at, you know, at the spinning horse. I'll be there from 9 to 2 a.m. Come on in, bring your friends. They're using their social media word of mouth marketing. MLM salespeople not only sell the company's products, but also encourage others to join the company as a distributor. Fact. That's what, yes, you, because if you look at the model, the ultimate goal for the, 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 the main company, right, is to sell products. Let's just say they somebody has a, a, a eyeliner, whatever it is. Their job just like any other company out there, is to sell all the eyeliner there is, right? Sell, 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 get repeat customers, blah, 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 blah. When you look at the model that's done, which is harder to do by selling a product and then trying to turn that consumer into a business owner, teaching them how to leverage their tax laws, how to wind up becoming a business owner, teaching marketing, personal skills development, you know, it, all that. It's easier to show somebody the value of, hey, if you like the product, stay on it, get involved with the business, Learn how to use the taxes for your advantage, like other businesses do. And then let's repeat that. It keeps people on the product longer. And why would you not want to keep somebody on a product they enjoy longer? If somebody says, you know, I'm, I'm a dude, I don't need eyelash liner, eyeliner, how are you going to say, hey, well, John, this is how it's going to benefit you. It's going to make you look sexier. The women will love you. This, that. Are you going to say, I appreciate that? Uh, you know, do you eat McDonald's? No, I don't. Well, would you own a McDonald's franchise? Yes, I would. Okay, so if we see the uh, if we see the value in owning a product somebody may not use, they can give it away, they can resell it, they can sample it, whatever. They're going to stay involved with the business for the value they see in the business. It's not a hard concept to to, to grasp. Uh, um, companies that use MLM models for compensation have been frequent. Su subject of criticism and lawsuits. Criticism is focused um, on their similarity to an illegal pyramid scheme. Pri how? I, I, I don't know. You're not, uh, you're not putting that in your narrative here. Price of fixing products. High initial entry costs for marketing kit and first products. So I have been involved with three uh, network marketing companies. And I actually went back to the first one I started with. Every single one of them to get involved as a brand partner, distributor, whatever, has been less than $50 or around $50, right? Around $50. Let's, let's call it less than $100. The product to stay on, it's a choice, right? It's always a choice. Well, you need X amount of products a month. I think you're going to get that in a second. Let me continue. I think you do get that for a second. So number one, the cost to enter I've never seen one that's really higher than $100 based on the, the brand partner fee to get involved. So I don't, I don't know if you've seen some. And then isn't that relative? Because if somebody wants to go into a McDonald's, I think it's like $2.5 million for a franchise fee. But if you got involved in Mary Kay, and they've been around forever, right? And it's a great company. It's paid for, all this kind of stuff. And somebody says, well, it's $1,500 to buy into this franchise. 
That's your subjectivity to whether or not that is an exorbitant amount of money that you're willing to pay. Some people have that saved up. Some people are like, that's nothing. So if a, if a, if a person making $250,000 a year says, yeah, I'd like to do this on the side, $1,500 is not a problem. Is that an excessive fee? High cost? This is subjective is my point. What matters to you doesn't matter to, to some people. Emphasis on recruitment of others over actual sales. But again, the business model is recruit and then manage. If, if Here's the problem, and this is why all of the arguments are fallible, because ultimately, if the product is not moved by either you purchasing it, because the business model I follow is I became a franchise owner and I am my own customer. I don't sell product. I don't sell products. I sell the business model, show people the value in becoming the business partner with this. They become their own product. So, yes, I, by default, product is being air quotes sold, but the value I put on is I put the value on the business, the totality, the product, the culture, and the cash flow. The three C's, I call it. Commerce, cash flow, and culture. So I'm not just presenting value on, on the product alone. So, again, just wonder where you're at with that. Um, so that Not to mention the fact the companies will tell you you can make X amount of dollars doing this. I was with an energy company for a very brief amount of time, and they had two things. You could tap out at $150,000 a year by only, and it was uh, uh, switching people's energy bills. $150,000 a year is nothing to shake a stick at. Or you could become involved with it, and start recruiting people, and then you get a percentage of it, and then you you cap out like seventeen thousand dollars a month. Well, why would I not want to sit there and go on that? Is seventeen thousand dollars a month on top of the one hundred and fifty a year? Why would I not want to do that? It's a choice. It's always a choice to whoever's coming in. So again, what's illegal about this? Unless you're just saying people are too stupid to read the fine print, and it's not even fine print. It's but it's offered up front to begin with. Uh, encouraging members to purchase the company's products. Yes, a rising tide lifts all boats. And I'll reference the book all the time. Robert Kiyosaki's Business of the 21st Century. The model is not to wind up selling product, but it's to use your network to create business owners who are their own customers. I'm not going to lie. It took me about three months when I first read that, I'm like, I don't understand this. It's not tangible. I don't get it. I had to continue and power through and educate myself until it made sense. And I know so many people just don't get that. I mean, the bottom line is, is if you had a household and you owned a grocery store, would you go to like, if you own, you know, a ABC grocery store, but EFD grocery stores across the street, would you not tell your family and household? No, my wife, you go shop at EDFs. Well, you know, isn't your income going to go back into your store so that your store can keep? I don't. All right. Let's keep going on this. Um, exploitation of personal relationships as both sales and uh, recruiting targets. That's a problem. Oh, we're going to make $150 a day or an hour or a fucking minute. Well, I love you. Uh, the, the upline I was with in the last company constantly sat there and their trainings consisted of, I love you. I believe in you. And I would go. How the fuck is this training? This is not training. Do we get? Are we going to talk about how to wind up breaking the ice with somebody that you know you're 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 because you, how many people say they they call them hey huns, where they slip into people's DMs. Hey hun, how you doing, babe? It's like that's not business. I agree with that. So you have to. If I walked up to you on the street and I said, Hey dude, what's going on? Yeah, I'm Officer Israel with the so and so police department. What's up, man? How's things? Versus, sir, you know I need to speak with you for a moment. There, where's the professionalism in this business? So that's a problem. I agree with you, but that's not illegal. It's not illegal. Let's continue. Complex or exaggerated compensation schemes. I will agree with you. Exaggerated, 100%. Complex? Yeah, when you're talking about points and you're talking about levels and you're talking about this, learn it. Learn it. If there's something that you don't understand, learn it. I been involved with the martial art for 25 years when i first got involved with it was it too complex and i'm, I'm gonna quit it's a scam started out as a wrestler too complex a scam so i went to be a cop what do you mean i got to figure out to charge somebody if it's a local ordinance or a state charge i got to give them a court date that's at least 30 days uh, after the date of an arrest on a monday and send them down to this courtroom okay uh, shit how do i do a traffic stop position my car 
and then activate the lights. Wh wh where do I use the siren? Learn it. Learn it. Use of force structure. How do I wind up doing it? We had to take a test to prove that we learned it. If something is complicated, learn it. And the good thing about things like the academy, it weeds out the weak. We don't want the weak. So if it's complicated, learn it. Uh, the company and or leading distributors making money off of their training events and materials. How is that illegal? How is that illegal? So again, I teach a martial art. I have a free YouTube channel. I've got one of the biggest uh, martial arts channels for what I do on YouTube for the last 10 years. And I teach if somebody if for free. All the content is all free, right? It's monetized, but the content's free. So... Does that mean if somebody DMs me and says, I want to learn from you, and I say, well, my private lessons are $150 an hour? Is that illegal or immoral? Oh, Izzo, can you write me up a training program? Sure. It's X amount of dollars. Is that illegal or immoral? Again, trying to find out where this is a scam. And cult-like techniques, which some groups use to enhance their members' enthusiasm and devotion. None of what you... <laughs> Dude... Fucking, you ever been, I started at TGI Fridays when I was 21 years old. You know those team building bullshit exercises they do? Let's all dance and jump and, you know, change your state. Is that a scam? Corporations do team building. They have events and it's loud music and it's to change your state. Now, I'll agree with you. I don't like mixing faith in business. I'm a Christian. I don't tell people you only have to be a Christian and worship Jesus to be on my team. They, but I want them knowing flat out who I am first. So where, out of anything that you listed, and this was your description of MLMs, allmlmfacts.org. So far, what you've described is available in so many, if not most, corporations out there. I, when I went to that big box gym to learn, we had two weeks of training, and we had this ridiculous team building. Everybody get up and dance. And I'm like, I'm fucking not here dancing. I'm here learning how do your system of training works. So I understand that. But nothing of what you said. AllMLMFacts.org. AllMLMFacts.org. Nothing of what you listed is a scam, illegal. Maybe some things could be considered immoral. It's based on your perception. Personally, I don't see it as immoral. I see it as sales tactics. But then again, you'd have to go around and talk to every car dealer, every personal trainer, every yacht salesman, every every home uh, uh, realtor, every commercial realtor. Nothing is a scam. So again, I appreciate you putting this material out there. And more people need to understand what this is because if we're going to correct this industry... One of the first things that needs to be done is to correct the criticism so people understand when I'm going to wind up uh, talking to a prospect and they come to me with this material and say, say, oh, it's, it's an absorbent fee to wind up getting in. Is that your perception or is that a fact? I want to know which one it is. You know, would you pay, uh, would you pay $100,000 for a pristine, off-the-line, never-been-driven-before 1969 Dodge Charger. I probably would. Because that's my value put in that. Well, I, don't, I, don't, well, I have no idea what your value is in something. So you're talking about perception being a reality, not a scam. So I appreciate you putting this content out. Um, this was good stuff. This was good. All right, guys, this is another edition of the Bull of MLM Network Marketing Warfare. I'm Dominic Izzo. I am the Bull of MLM. I want to educate you in this industry because we want to change lives. We really want to teach people what's going on in this. You guys have a great damn day, and I'll see you on the next episode.